We bless the name of the Lord for his faithfulness, O Lord, for the, for his, for the opportunity given unto us to be alive today. God has been so good to us. I believe God has been so good to you. Please see it, see it, see it. I'm waiting for people to join. See it, please. Bless the name of the Lord. God is good. God is good all the time. God is good. God is good. God is good. Please share it. Share it with family. We are sharing it with friends. Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. God, you are good, you are good, you are good. Oh, we worship you, we worship you. We worship you, we bless you. We bless you because you are God. We thank God for the opportunity God gave you unto us to be alive today. God has been so good to us. I believe God has been so good to you and your family. This is a new day. It's a day of joy. It's a day of gladness. I want you to celebrate God for the opportunity God gave you unto you to be alive. Many people, we started the week together. They are nowhere to be found. But you are still alive by His grace. Not because you can pray, not because you are holy, not because you are righteous, not because you are good. It's by His grace. It's by His grace. It's by His grace. I want you to, I want you to share you with family, share you with friends. Let them, let them be, let them be partaker of what God is about to do tonight. Because I believe God is going to do exceedingly, abundantly about what we can imagine and ask for. Share you with family, share you with friends. Let them be partaker tonight. And I want you to prepare your heart, prepare your mind, because God is about to do a great thing in our midst tonight. Pre prepare your heart, get your note ready, not notepad ready, get your Bible ready. And let us let us go into the word of God and see what God has in store for us tonight. We 
I started, I started on Wednesday. Uh, we look at who we are in Christ. And we started from the book of Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Uh, we, we, uh, past, past Psalm 139. We say that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we look at how God created man, how God imparted on us. The, the power, the spirit to exercise dominion over every situation. But today, I'm going to continue where I stop on Wednesday. Because you are, we, already, we already established that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That we are not ordinary. We are unique. That it doesn't matter what we may go through right now. What God has spoken concerning our life, that's what we, we have. And today, I want to, and I want to, I want to, I want to continue where I stop. Today, I just want, I want to continue by saying that as, as somebody has been fearfully and wonderfully made, what is required of us? Now we are, we try, we have established our true identity in God, but what is required of us? Because we cannot just be walking around and saying that we, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And expect things to happen. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Which means God expects us to, to do certain things in order for us to reach our full potential in Christ. God expects us to do, to, to do certain things for us to see a full expression of God's love. To, to then, tonight we are going to continue. And I believe if we are unable to finish the series tonight, we will continue on Sunday. Yes, we cannot sit down and expect things to happen and wish that I wish I can. I wish I can without doing anything about it. It doesn't work like that. And tonight I will start that God requires us to renew our mind. To renew our mind. And I want us to, I want us to start from the from the New Testament in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. If you you have your Bible with you. Can you open your Bible to the book of Romans chapter, chapter 12? We will read verse 2 together. Romans 12, verse 2. Let, let's start from verse 1 so that we can have a, a, a clear picture of what God is, try, is trying to tell us. Say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, by the mercy of God, by the mercy of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Two, we, first two, that's where we are going to concentrate on. And be not conformed to this world, and be yet transformed by the renewal of your mind. Renew of your mind. I want you to, I want you to take notice of that word, renew of, renew of your mind. Renew of your mind that you may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect way of God. Which means until you renew your mind, you cannot prove what is, what is good. Until you renew your mind, nothing you can hover God that can, will be acceptable. Until you renew your mind, you will not be able to fulfill the perfect way of God. That we need to re renew our mind. We need to reset our mind and think differently. No wonder Paul said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, he said, If any man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away. Because you cannot put the whole old wine into the new wine skin. It doesn't work like that. We are on, on where on where then we establish that we are wonderfully and fearfully made, and God expects us to renew our mind, to change our mindset, to change our mindset. The way you used to think before you born again, you have your approach has to be different now. It has to be different. If nothing has changed so far, which means I don't think you are born again yet. If nothing has changed in your lives so far, there's a question mark on your salvation. He said, renew your mind, which means you have to reset your mind in your reason, in the way you, uh, you, uh, you conduct yourself. You, everything has to change. Because nothing changes outside until 
your until it changes inside first. It, you, the change must, must first take place inside before people can see changes outside. Brother and sister, we must renew our mind. We must renew our mind. We must renew our mind. God wants us to reset our mind and think and think big. See things from the from the faith point of view. See dream big. See things big. Because if it's too big for your for your mind to imagine, it will be too big for your hand, hand to handle. See thing, see, see big picture of where you are going. See big picture of what you want to become in life. See big, big picture of what God wants you to be. But until your mind is renewed, you still you 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 will still be thinking based on the circumstances surround you. Based on based up on what is happening around you. But if you renew your mind, you will not walk by sight, but you will walk by faith. You will see that what God has spoken concerning your life. It will surely come to pass. You will see the big, uh, bigger picture of yourself. And you will imagine great things. And you will pursue it with all your mind. With all your strength. Because you will see that oh God, Because when God called Abraham. He said I will make you a part of many nations. Abraham see the big, big picture. Abraham didn't see himself as a single man. He, see, he saw himself as a nation. And that, that shape is thinking. Brother and sister, tonight, although you are fearfully and wonderfully made, you need to change your mindset. You need to change your mindset. See the bigger picture of what God has in store for you. See the bigger picture of what you want to become in life. And pursue it with all your strength, with all your might. Because until you do so, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Your, your imagination has to be, has to be a, a faith-based imagination. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. See the bigger, bigger picture. Don't just think because of what you are seeing right now. Don't let what you are seeing right now determine how you think, how you reason. No, because man shall not live by dream. Man shall live by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. But when you see from the from the high with the eyes of faith, you can we will be able to see the bigger picture of what God is about to do in your life. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11, you talk about the power of imagination. Because if it's too big for you to imagine, brother and sister, it will be, it will be too big for your hand to handle. Chapter uh, verse, verse, verse 6. Genesis 11, verse 6. And the God and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have, they have all one language. They have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them. Which they have imagined to do. They begin to do. They imagine to do. He said nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing will be restrained from them. Which they have imagined to do. That's why I said imagine, see the bigger picture and pursue it. And give God recognizes that what people imagine to do. Nothing shall restrain them. Brother and sister, if you can come, you come to your mind, to come to your mind, it can come to your hand. That's faith. If you can imagine it, that's why I said last time that after this COVID-19 pandemic, where do you want to see yourself? Where do you want to see yourself? Because if you can't if you can see it, you can't have it. That's how we work. If you cannot see it, don't expect it to have it. Because faith is a substance of thing we hope for. The heaven of things not seen. Not seen. We, we are coming to the to the to the to the to the, uh, to the level whereby we must operate from from the from faith perspective. 
Because if we base our, our oppression on what we are seeing around us, definitely we won't get there. But tonight I come to announce to you that imagine great things. See yourself. Where do you want to see yourself after this pandemic? And because God wants you to renew your mind, to renew your mind. Say, be not be conformed, but be, let your mind be renewed. Let your mind be renewed. Let your mind be renewed. And Genesis, God recognizes that these people, not nobody will be able to stop them. Because they imagine that when we build a house, we, we, we will reach heaven. And if God didn't stop them, they would have done so. Brother and sister, there's a power in imagination. They imagine it and they take action. They imagine it and they take action. If you can imagine it, you can have it. But if, it, if it's too big for you to imagine, brother and sister, it will be too big for you to handle. Because without revelation, there's no restoration. Without re revelation, there's no restoration. If you don't have that revelation, nothing shall be restored. If you don't have revelation, nothing shall be given. Nothing shall be given. Nothing shall be given. Without the revelation, there's no restoration. Imagine, because you cannot arrive in a place you cannot see. Remember the story of Abraham. You cannot arrive in a place where you cannot, where you cannot see. You must be able to see with the eyes of the Spirit. You must be able to see with the eyes of the Spirit. Where you are going, where you are heading to, where you want to see yourself. You must be able to see with the eyes of the Spirit. Brother and sister, renew your mind. Renew your mind. When you go to Genesis chapter 13, Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 18, Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 18, God said, God said to Abraham, as far as you can see, as far as you can see, you can only go as far as you can see. You can only go as far as you can see. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to, 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 uh, to, to 18. You can only go as far as you can see. That's why your mind has to be reset. You have to reset your mind. You have to reset your mind. You have to reset your mind. Because you can't arrive there until you, can, you are able to see it with the eyes of the Spirit. As far as you can see. There are people fail in the, in the journey of life because they can't see. They can't see. They have a natural eye. They have sight, but they don't have the eyes of the Spirit. They have sight, but they have no vision. And in, in the book of uh, in Proverbs 28, verse 18. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs 28, 29, verse 18. Proverbs 29. Verse 18. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Where there's no vision, people perish. Some, some of us, we just wake up in the morning, that's nothing. We just go, we just go with the flow. No, no. Remember that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. You shouldn't live your life like that. There must be something pushing you. There must be a driving force behind whatever you are doing. And the Bible says, without vision, people perish. People perish. People perish. You must have, you must have a vision of where you want to be, where you are going and where you want to be. You must, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must. Because until you see it, don't expect to get it. And Abraham, the Bible said, he looked. He looked. He looked northwest, southwest. His, he looked at hand. And God fulfilled it because Abraham was able to see it. Brother and sister, ask yourself, what do you see? Do you have a vision? Do you have a vision? And you just get up in the morning, go with the flow, come back home? No, 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 no. Your life must have a destination. Your life must have a destination. You must have a picture of where you are heading to. If, you, if, if there is somebody in your life that inspires you, you must find a way to get closer to the person. 
If you can't see the person in the physical, maybe you can read, read about the person through book or whatever, but you yourself must have a picture of where you are going, what you want to be in life, why you do what you are, you are doing. Because God has requires us to renew our mind. Say, let your mind be renewed. Let your mind be renewed. We cannot put new wine to, into old wine screen. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter, chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. I will read verse 11 to 12. Jeremiah 1. Verse 11 to 12. He said, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? You see now? You see, when you read from Genesis to Revelation, you will see that people that, are, that have, have climbed the ladder of great greatness, they didn't just arrive there overnight. When you read the story of Joseph, Joseph has seen the future. He has seen where his God is taking him to. That's my whole what, you have, what is, he has been through. Because he was able to see the picture. Because if you can, can come to your mind, it can come to your hand. If it can come to your mind, it can come to your hand. If you can see with the eyes of the Spirit, God is able to take you there. And God asked Jeremiah, he said, he said, he said son of Jeremiah, he said, saying, Jeremiah, what see thou? And I said, I saw a rod of an almond tree. And then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. For I will hasten my way to perform. For God to hasten his way to perform in your life, you must have ability to see with the eyes of the Spirit. For God to hasten his way to perform in your life, in your business, in your family, in your marriage, in your ministry, you must be able to see where. You must have the eyes of the Spirit. You must have the eyes of the Spirit. You must have vision. You, have, you must have vision. You must have it. Go where there's no vision. People perish. People perish. The life becomes, the, the destiny will crash. The destiny will crash where there's no vision. The destiny will crash where there's no vision. Brother and sister, you can't avoid that. You can't avoid that. The second point I want to talk to talk about tonight is we have we have we are wonderfully and faithfully made, but God expects us to be strong and courageous. We know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and God expects us to be strong and courageous because. We will encounter giants. We will encounter Jericho. We will encounter Aitofel. We will encounter people that will gather against us. We will encounter people that are ready to destroy the work of our hand. We will encounter people that are ready to frustrate our effort. That's why we must be strong and courageous. We must be strong and courageous and and. Hands, T. Let's go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 4. I will read from verse 18 to 21. If you, if you have your Bible closer to you, if you can please open your Bible to Romans chapter 4. I will read from verse 18 to, to 21. Verse 18 to 21. I'm reading from King James Version. And who I said, who against all believe in hope? He's talking about Abraham. Believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations. Because Abraham was able to see it. According that to that which was spoken, so said thy seed be. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body, now dead. He consider not his own body. Maybe you may have sickness in your body. Don't let that dash your hope. No. Maybe you are you may be in a big mess right now. You may be in a situation, a critical situation right now. Don't let that dash your hope. Remember, remember I want you to hear this story. Be not weak in faith. 
even the body was old. Abraham was old. Everything become, everything is shutting down. But he was not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. He considered not his own situation. He considered not his own predicament. He considered not his own circumstances. But what, what does he do? When he was about 100 years old, not yet the deadness of Sarah womb. 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He did not allow unbelief. He said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. That's why I said be strong and be courageous. Don't let the challenges make you doubt God. Don't allow the situation you are in make you think maybe I don't think God is there. Don't let what is the happening around you give you a false hope that uh, uh, there's no way out. It's staggered now at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. I like that. Was strong in faith, giving glory to God. It was strong in faith without even seeing it. See the reality of it without even have the result of his prayer of, of, of that promise. It is giving glory to God and being, and being fully persuaded. He was fully persuaded. He was strong. He was courageous. He, he was fully persuaded that he has God has promised is able to perform it. <laughs> Brother and sister, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. He staggered all at the promise of God through unbelief. He was fully persuaded that God has promised is able to do it. Because he's able to do exceedingly about, about what you can imagine and ask for. He was fully persuaded. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. It does not mean that you are not going to face challenges. It does not mean you are not going to face obstacles. It does not mean you are not going to face opposition. It does not mean you are not the first giant, but God is saying to you that tonight, be strong and courageous. Stagger out at the promise of God through unbelief. Because God has promised, is able to fulfill what he has promised. Don't become tired and, and discouraged in the face of trouble and challenges. Don't become tired and discouraged in the face of adversary. Don't become tired and, 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 and distressed and frustrated in the, in the storm of life. Rather, be strong in faith, knowing that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Stand firm on the promise of the word of God. Stand firm because every other thing can fail. The word will never, never fail. The word will never, never fail. Faith. Stand firm upon the promise of the word of God. That's about the happening around you. Because he that spoken is able to perform what you are spoken over your life. Point three. We are, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God expects us to be focused and be consistent. God expects us to be focused and consistent. Because Distraction will come. Distraction, something to distract you. Something to make you change the course. Something to that, will, that, that if you cannot take it, you will change your route. You will change your direction. We come. Be focused and be consistent. Be focused and be consistent. It may not happen now, but be focused. Be focused. Paul said, one thing I do, I forget those things behind. I press on. Toward the mark of my high calling. Brother and sister, be focused and be consistent. Because something will come on your way to distract you. That's why, that's why the Bible says we should not be ignorant of the vices of the enemy. See the COVID-19? COVID-19 is a distraction. Because God is about to release the spirit of revival. That we see across the world. And the enemy wants to counteract it. But 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 unfortunately, it, it is too late because God has spoken. He had the ability 
to make things happen. Be, be consistent, be focused. Be consistent, be focused. Whatever God has called you to do, be consistent and be focused. Be consistent and be focused. Be consistent and be focused. Because God has spoken. God has given you that ministry. God has given you that business. God has given you that family. Is able, is able to fulfill what He has ordained for your life. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. The book of Hebrew, chapter 12. I will read verse 2. Hebrew 12, verse 2. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2. Said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking. That's why I said, be focused and be consistent. Looking unto Jesus. So that when you are when you are going, don't look left or right, but but let your mind set your mind on Christ. 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 Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Focus on, focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Don't just give up on your dream or aspiration. Because no what? Because you try, it doesn't work, you drop that. No. No. Be focused and be consistent. Don't just drop it. Because it doesn't work this year. It doesn't work next year. Remember, when Abraham received the promise, he has to wait for how many years? 25 years. Before the, before, before the fulfillment of the, uh, the, of the prophecy. Do, be, be focused. Don't lose, look, lose focus. What if, regardless of what is going on around you, don't lose focus. Enemy will not overcome you. The enemy will not prevail over your life until he makes you lose focus. That's why you will need to be sensitive to the thing of the spirit. There are things will come your way. It may look like it's good, but it's a distraction. Don't allow any form of this, any, any, anything to distract you. Be focused. Be focused. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Don't just give up on you. On your dream on that spiritual because of the challenges. Don't let what you are what you are going through change your confession and say, and say ah, I'm poor. It's over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Don't let be, don't let don't let delay make you think that okay, I think I, I've done. No, be focused, be focused, be consistent and be focused and be focused. Be consistent. Remember the story of Batimus Batimus. The blind man in Mark. But me. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 10. So that you will see the power of consistent. The power of consistent. The power of consistent. Mark 10. I will read first 48 and 49. 48 and 49. You will see the power of being consistent. Be consistent. And many charge him. I don't want to read the whole story. And many charge him that he is to hold his peace. People say, keep quiet. Keep quiet. But he cried thee more. He great thee. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he called thee. Brother and sister, there are people will come into your life. They will tell you that it won't happen. Don't listen to them. This blind man needed Jesus' attention. But people said, stop, oh, stop, stop, you are making noise, you are making noise, you are making noise. But the Bible said, he cried the more. He, you see, that's why you need focus. You need to be focused. You need to be focused. Because there are people that are voice will tell you that you can't do it. Nobody has reached that level in your family. Nobody has achieved that. It has never happened in history. Brother and sister, be consistent in whatever you are, God has called you to do and be focused. Because there are voices. There are voices from every corner that will come across your path. There are things you will see that make you think maybe God, you didn't hear God. You hear God. You have heard God. 
Be, be, be focused and be consistent. God will definitely answer your prayer if you are focused and consistent. Do you don't pray one day and say, time up. You don't pray one month and say, time up. You pray until something happens. You, you, you continue until you get your desired result. Remember the story, the, par the parable, Jesus' parable. He talked about, uh, 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 about the widow and, and the unjust judge. The, the woman keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. When you come to the point, the man said, just let, let, let just, just answer her. You need to be consistent. You need to be consistent. You don't try it today and stop it and do another one. No. Be focused and be consistent. Be focused and be consistent. Be focused and be consistent. Don't just quit. For God will never disappoint you. Let's go to the Abacock chapter, Abacock chapter 2, verse 3. The book of Abacock. Chapter 2, verse 3. It says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will swallow come, it will not tarry. Do you hear that? What God has spoken to your life is for an appointed time. But unfortunately, man doesn't have clue of the appointed time. Man doesn't know what, what the time appointed by God. We don't know. But he said, but at the end is a speak. At the end is a swallow come to pass. But he said, but though it tarry, maybe it may not come the time you expect. He said, though it tarry, but he said, wait for it. Because it will swallow, swallow come. That's why you need to be focused. You need to be consistent. He said, though it will tarry, it, it, it tarry, though it delay, though it, so it look as if it's not going to happen. He said, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. According to man program, it may look as if it's, the, the, time is, the, uh, the time is going. The time is gone. The time is gone. The time is gone. It might, it might look as if it's too late with our God. There's no case that's too late. He said, it's my tally. Which means it may, be, it may look as if it's delayed. According to man's program. But he said, wait for it. Wait for it. Because it will swallow. The word swallow means it's certain. 100% assurance that what God has spoken, it will surely come to power. He said, wait for it. 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 Let's go to Psalm 27, verse 14. Psalm 27, verse 14. Psalm number 27, verse 14. He said, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 14. Wait. Wait for it. Be focused and be consistent. Be focused and be consistent. Be hopeful. Be hopeful that it will surely come to pass. Have that hope that it will surely come to pass. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 5a. Romans 5, Romans 5, 5a. The A part, the first part. He said, And hope maketh no shame. Hope never disappoints. When you have hope in God, when you have hope in God, you will never be disappointed. You will never be disappointed. You will never be disappointed. Another point, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and God expects us to be obedient. Be obedient. To God. Be obedient to God. Unfortunately, when we come to the history of obedience, we all have problems. We all have we all have problems. We all have excuses. But I wanted to say to you tonight, on the day of fast, prayer and fasting, we not be uh, you cannot use on the day of prayer and fasting to substitute for obedience. 
Because the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. It's better than prayer. It's better than fasting. It's better than uh, giving to the poor. Obedience. God requires our obedience. God requires our obedience. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. Isaiah 1, 19. God expects us to obey, to obey Him at, at all levels. Whether you are children, whether you are adults, whether you are minister or whatever, God requires our obedience. He said, if ye be willing and obedient, you shall hear the good of the land. If you be will and obedient. And it takes humility to obey God. It takes humility to obey God. God expects us to obey, to obey Him. To obey him. To obey him. Don't disregard God's command and expect him to intervene in your life. You cannot disregard his, his command and expect God to act on your behalf. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy ch chapter 11. I will read from verse 13. 11 from 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye are diligently, Unto, the, my, unto my commandment, which I command you this day, and to love your God, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in their corn, and their wine, and their oil, and I will send grass, in the in their feed for their cattle, God promised that He will supply our need. Deuteronomy chapter eleven, verse thirteen to fifteen, that if we obey Him, and remember, any time the children of Israel disobey God, what happened? <laughs> the result that, that, that is not good. Any time you disobey God, you will not disobey God. It will go. It will be well. Please and please, brother and sister. We must obey God. We must obey God. We must obey God. And we must know that obedience is better than our sacrifice. If you are not going to obey God, don't bother to pray. If you are not going to obey God, don't bother to fast. If you are not going to obey God, don't bother. Don't bother to go for evangelism. Obedience. 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 Remember the story of Saul. Saul disobeyed disobey God. And he lost, he lost his throne. He lost his throne. You cannot avoid to, to tamper with your destiny, to tamper with God or them plan for your life through your disobedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. The another point, the, the another point I want to talk about tonight is be a sacrificial giver. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God expects you to be a sacrificial giver. You don't just give. Let's go to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9. The 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Chapter 9. I will read verse 6 and 7. Chapter 9. 6 and 7. He said, But this I say, he which sows springly, shall reap springly. He which sow bountifully, shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. So let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God love a cheerful giver. God love a cheerful giver. As, it, as someone has been Fearfully and wonderfully made. You shouldn't let anybody de de decide that you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't give. Wherever you are, whether you go to church or you don't go to church. Because you are specially made by God. God, God. God created you for His glory. And anything that will give Him glory, nobody will tell you that it's not necessary. This is the New Testament. He said, God, He said, you shouldn't give because. You give and complain. No. Say, not with grudgingly 
or of necessity that we, you have been forced to give. No. I said, for God love a cheerful giver. Don't just give. Let your giving come from a pure heart. Let your giving come from a pure heart. Even if you want to give the poor, you want to give in the church, wherever you want to give your money to, let your giving come from a pure heart. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart. For this I see God. When they give, God so God so God so when it comes to the giving, we all have all, all, all sort of theological questions. But I want to tell you, if you only, if you if you really if you, you really know who you are, nobody, nobody to tell you that you shouldn't give. Nobody to tell you that you shouldn't give. Nobody should be in the position to say, uh, you don't have to give this, you don't have to give that. No, no, no. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. He said, God, Lord. A cheerful giver. You give out of joy. Out of joy. I want to show you something tonight. Let's go to Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. I will read fast from fast 2. Exodus 25. Yeah. Um, let's read from fast 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses. I want to hear this. Saying, speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. A, a offering of every man that give it willingly, willingly with his heart. Yes, I take my offering. You see, you, you see, it's a condition. You don't just give. Uh, because they say we should give. No. He said, Pope Moses, don't just take from anybody. Because I'm not a beggar. I'm a God. Thousands of ram upon the mountain belong to me. Riches, gold and silver are mine. But only collect from people that give from for the willing heart. Willing heart. Willing heart. Let, that's why I said let your giving come from a pure heart. Willing heart. God is not required or offering of, from a complainer. From someone that will be grumbling. God is required offering from people that, that will give with the heart, with the heart of joy. You give to the kingdom of God. You give to the poor. You give to the widow. You give to the fatherless. This is all scriptural. That's what we. That's what we need, Holy Spirit. The Bible, Jesus said, "When that Spirit comes, He will teach you all things, all things, all things." All thing. And I said, "You have to be a sacrificial giver, a sacrificial." Giver. David said something. He said, I will not give God what does not cost me. I will not give God what does not cost me. Let's go to um, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. He said, I will not give my God what does not cost me. The man understood. He understood the power of being a sacrificial giver. 24. And the king said unto Anna, Nay, I will swallow by it of thee at a price. Then I will I offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, my God, of, of that which does, which does cost me nothing. Which does cost me nothing. Be a sacrificial giver. The Lord said, I will not give God what does not cost me. Be a sacrificial giver. And an example is Solomon. When you go to the first king, let's go to the first, first king chapter chapter three. First king chapter three. I will read from I will read five and four and five. And the king went to Gibbon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand bond offering the Solomon offered upon that altar. In Gibbon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in the dream by night. And God said, Ask what has he give to you? When Solomon offered unto God, the Bible said, The glory of the Lord filled the temple, and the priests could not perform their duty. If something is not something God desires, do you think the glory of the Lord will come upon the temple? Brother and sister, don't let the Bible say we should not be ignorant or device of the enemy. Because when it comes, every other thing in the Bible. It doesn't require argument. It doesn't require debate. But when it comes to giving, then it becomes 
and use you. Brother and sister, what I want to tell you tonight, let God minister to you. This is the scripture. He said, God love a cheerful giver. Wherever God has planted you, be a cheerful giver. Give to the kingdom. Give towards the kingdom business. Give to the poor. Give to the widow. Give to the fatherless. Give to the less privileged people. Because this is scriptural. This is the scriptural. And when you do so, the Bible says, Whosoever giveth to the poor, lendeth unto God. And Jesus made a nice parable in Matthew 25. He said, when I was hungry, you didn't give me. When I was, when, 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 when I need help, you didn't help me. And they said, when? He said, as long as you cannot do it to your fellow brother, you didn't do it to me. Any hand of air you extend to somebody, you are, you are not doing it to that person, you are, do, you are doing it unto God. And God will reward you. Because God will not hold any man anything. God will not hold any man anything. Your, your giving should not be out of compulsion, you should, you should joyfully give to the team pertaining to the kingdom. You should also give to the poor, give to the widow, give to the parallel, give to the less privileged people. Let your life impact somebody. Let your life impact somebody. What God has given to you is not for you alone. It's to be a blessing to somebody. Make somebody happy through your giving. Put a smile on somebody's face through your giving. Let God look down and, and smile. That's why I say, be a sacrificial giver. You know, God is law, and we must demonstrate that law in our giving. In our giving. You give your time, you give your resources, you give your knowledge. Giving, you give all kinds of things, and everything you give. God always pays people back. He said, give. I said, it's a be giving unto you. If you haven't received something yet, you have, it's that thing you haven't given out. That's the law. Anything you haven't given out, don't expect to receive it because it's a gift. It's a gift unto you. Press together. Running over. Running over. If you haven't so kindness to the poor, don't expect God to show you kindness. Brother and sister, be a sacrificial giver. A gift giver. Don't wait for people to decide whether you should give or not. Give. Obey the word. Let God, let the word of God minister to you. Let the Spirit of the Lord minister to you and your life will never be the same. I will stop here tonight and I will continue on Sunday. Brother and sister, always remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Nobody should look down on you. Nobody should tell you that you are nobody. Nobody should make you feel bad. Nobody should talk to you anyhow. Don't allow any man to intimidate you. And don't allow any situation to, tell, to, to, to make you change, you change 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 your language and say, I don't think I can do it. You can do it. For you can do all things through, through Christ which strengthen you. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face land upon you. And God may leave his continent upon you and grant you peace as you go forward this weekend. The Lord bless you. The Lord protect you. No virus. No penicillin. No evil, no danger, no accident is permitted to come closer to you. For God will send his angel to keep you in all your way. You are not going to be a victim in this season. You will be a victor. It is well with you. It is well with, with your soul. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our father, Abyss of Jubamita Paul Ackman, keep you, preserve your life forever, and you will never have any call to cry this year. You are not permitted to suffer loss. You are not permitted to suffer loss. But I don't want to close this broadcast. But that give you an opportunity to amend your way. Maybe you are there. God is ministering to you right now. And you want to say to me that Pastor, I think I've gone astray. I want to come back home. You know, it is appointed for man once to die. You don't die twice, you die once. And after that judgment, you cannot joke with your, with your soul. You can only die once. The Bible says, except man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Hell is real. Heaven is real. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. And whatsoever your hand found to do, do it now. Tomorrow may be too late. You have today. You have now. In the next one, one hour, you don't know what's going to happen. Whatever your hand found to do, do it and do it now. 
Maybe you are in that category. You want to say with me, hey, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I've gone astray. I've done my own thing. Lord, have mercy upon me. Forgive all my sin. Come into my, into my heart. Today, I confess you and I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Rule and reign in my life so that from tonight, my life will never remain the same. If you have prayed that prayer, I believe that you are born again. But you don't stop there. The Bible says we should not forsake the assembly of believers. Therefore, I want to invite you. If you are based in the United Kingdom, you can join us in our church. The name of our church is the Beneficial Parish of Christ Church. 281-283 Riley, London, SE15 for UA. And if you need more information, please feel free to send a message and we'll be happy to help. God bless you and enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.